I guess, here from Vienna for our first live panel session. I am very happy to be here. My name, as said before, is Georg Kuttner, actually, but you can call me George. Um, I am quite happy and quite thankful for the organizers here at the Female Factor that they take gender equality seriously, especially with the moderators. So thank you for <laughs> letting me be here. And for our first topic today, we decided to start with something easy. <laughs> well, who am I kidding? Um, not really true, because we started with the hardest topic ever, probably, basically the meaning of life. So something that, uh, well, we should be able to answer. Um, actually, the session is called Start With Why, but basically it is about the meaning of your business, the meaning of your personal life as well. So quite a hard topic to discuss, but something that can be very, very powerful once you have to find that for yourself or for your business. And I'm very, very glad that I don't have to answer this question myself because truth be told, I'm still struggling with that. Um, but for that, I have three, three, wow. No, I'm, I'm actually, I'm doing a pilot license. So for the number three, we say three, so that, uh, three, so that's not a mistake. So it wasn't purpose. Good, back to the topic. <laughs> for this topic, I have three amazing women here with me um, to hopefully help us get to the meaning of life and business and why. First, Alisa Eresina, transformation coach. Next to her, we have Sashka Regina, founder and CEO of brand Sashka Media. And the woman farthest away from me, but I hope she can still hear me, Nicole Schreier, CMO and board member of Four Paws. Now, to start this session off, before we dive deeply into the topic, I want to give you the opportunity to well, introduce yourself to our participants. And I'm going to start with you, Alisa. Tell us and the participants a little bit about yourself. Why are you here today? And uh, who are you? Who am I? We just said before the camera starts rolling. It's a very deep question. I know. Um, but that's what we're here for. And um, to follow up what you said, it's like I think I can comfortably say probably most of the people, if not all of the people, struggle with connecting to their purpose or what they're here for. So we're not alone here. Um, yeah, short and sexy. Like my name is Adisa. I work as a coach um, and I help people and individuals just to connect to themselves and answer these questions at their best capabilities and lead their lives and business from an authentic place. And what else? I love to speak about taboo topics. The female cycle is one of them and their power in the world, work and business. So that's it. Great. So if there is a um, shitstorm coming today, probably it will be from something Please that you said. Okay, good. I'm welcome. Keep that in mind. Thank you. <laughs> Sashka, same question to you. Who are you and uh, Why how are you I feeling, here? by the way? I'm feeling fine. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gail. George. Yeah, let's give it a go. <laughs> George. That's weird. So, why am I here? Uh, I pushed the envelope and asked to be here. So, seize the opportunity. Oh, I was forced. <laughs> like, I'd like to be here, please. I'd like to be a part of this vision and mission. Who am I? Big question, but just in a nutshell, Sashka. I'm a mom to three kids. I have my own business. I've been in business for 14 years. I build businesses, I turn them into brands. Um, I consult on strategy, I coach. Are we allowed to swear? I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, no bullshit coach. I don't take any shit from any of my clients or those that follow me, even my kids. Um, I want to bring the best out of you. I have been on a mission my whole life to find out what my why is, what our purpose is, and in the end created a methodology around it and wrote a book about it. And it's not as complicated as what we make it out to be. Ooh, I'm curious about that. So <laughs> let's see if we, if we get there. Last but not least, Nicole, question for you. Who are you or why are you? <laughs> why I am, as we discussed before, I can tell you very easily since I'm a zoologist. So the why <laughs> I'm here is very obvious, but the why I want to be here is, um, I think, also very, very easy, very blunt. I want to make the world a better place. So it's, it's a very big why, but it's also a very, very, very easy and understandable why. Um, yes, um, as I told you, I'm a, uh, I'm a uh, zoologist. I'm a, um, I've been working in, for environmental issues uh, my whole life. Uh, I've been, um, I've been uh, a politician before uh, and now 
Also, um, I'm, uh, um, I'm working for a charity organization for Four Paws. We're an uh, B, um, international uh, animal welfare organization. Um, yes. Big fan, by the way. Thanks a lot. <laughs> now. To work for a big Y also in that place. Obviously, yeah. And I think that's a, we have a very great mix of, of people here on stage because uh, we, can, we can look at this topic from different angles. We can take a look at it from a personal angle, from a professional angle, also some theory behind that, that, uh, as you said, not that hard. Now to kick this off, or actually before we do that, once again, a reminder for you guys sitting in front of the TV, no matter if you're wearing your pajamas or a suit. Um, at the end of the session, you can also ask some questions to our panelists. Actually, you can already ask them right now um, while we are talking. And we will cover your questions in the end. So please take that opportunity. If there's something that you know burns on top of your mind, just write it in the Q&A section on the right side of Hopin. Now, jumping into the topic of start with the why. Obviously, we all know, and I think the participants as well, um, this you know, golden circle, start with the why from Simon Sinek, why it's so important to find your why, why is it so powerful, and so on. I don't think we have to stay on, on this level because as you said, let's try to keep it a bullshit free zone. Not saying that bullshit is really good, but uh, we want to, to dive deeper here. So my first question for you, Alyssa, actually would be, do you even need a why in life or can you also live a happy life without defining your why? It's a very interesting way how you put it, and I love that. I know. We're, we're getting right into the juice. Yes. And then we should. Um, do we need a why? What is a why? Is it our internal motivation? Is it our purpose in life? Is it the meaning we give it to that? Um, I don't know. I think as a human being, um, the purpose is, I love what you said, like that it's easy. It's just to live just to live an experience. And I think very often we make it more out of it with our mind. How does it connect to the earth and to my work and to this, etc.? And it's not sometimes that complicated. So I, I resonate to what you said. Um, you can put meaning onto that. I think that's maybe a di bit difference between purpose and meaning. Like the purpose of this water is to be probably to, that I drink it. Uh, I think that's meaning, why they put it here, yeah. Exactly, but the meaning that I give it is it's in my hands. So it depends what you want to do out of that. And um, I mean, if you could speak of it also broadly, the why of a business could be also to make money. If it's really satisfying, I don't you know. You live in a capitalist world, yeah. Yes, exactly. And we're continuously challenging the status quo and asking ourselves, where is our place? But um, I would say there is no black and white answer to that. Obviously not. There is a lot yeah. of gray, just like here in the in the logo. <laughs> I love the goofiness here. Yeah, it's good. Good. Um, coming to the to the professional side, Nicole, you are working for a NGO um, for pause or for for pause. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about how do you um, incorporate this question of why are we doing this in your daily life um, as a leader, but also with your employees. Um, is that something you uh, you do strategically? Is that something that well everybody knows because you know we are helping animals? Um, how's this looking like it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we have for us as an organization, we already have defined the why within our vision, uh, which is uh, a world where uh, people treat animals with empathy, respect, and understanding. So we already have this why and this purpose why people want to work with us. Um, since we're a charity, obviously it's not about the salary, why people are working here. But uh, what is my main goal in this uh, panel is really talking about how to, how to make this why um, tangible and uh, living in the organization to really break it down, to really, make, um, to really break, uh, break it down to every one of our uh, wonderful staff members that they are so important to the why that exactly what they're doing is it hr is it it is it the bookkeepers that they are important and that they help us saving the animals so it's really bringing it down and making making appreciate people and, pre and appreciate their work 
how do you make sure that because you mentioned the different uh, the different levels in your organization from hr to to it to well the people who who work in the shelters and i guess people that work in the shelters they have a stronger connection to the why than mm -hmm. let's say the software developer who sits in front of the screen developing um, code so how do you make sure that also these people understand the why of your organization yes um that's a wonderful thing that I took over um, my, my co-board member, um, uh, Luciana D'Abramo, who is uh, responsible for our organizational development. So she's working with the IT department. She, um, she came up with this wonderful uh, habits to start every meeting with, thank you for saving so many animals today. So like really reminding the people, giving them the, the meaning and showing the connections, because of course, if, um, yeah, if we're not having, if you're, we're not having any money, if we're not having a, a functioning IT, then we couldn't do anything. So really breaking it down to every single position and making every single position valuable in this whole big picture and really reminding the people. Now, obviously for you as an organization like Four Paws, I, I guess, or I'm assuming it's a little bit easier defining that why, because animal, helpless, helping, Great. Now let's imagine uh, you're doing something where you don't save animals, but you are starting a marketing company, for example. How can you find your why? And I'm very curious about your answer now because you made a big claim in the beginning that it's actually not that hard. So how do you do it with the clients you're working with? We all tend to, it's physiologically in us. We start up from a very, very young age where we told by your granny or your auntie or your uncle or your grandfather or something to that and they come and take your cheek and they go, what do you want to be when you grow up? Who do you want to be when you grow up? And you're like, oh, a fireman. I don't know. I want to be, I don't know, rubbish truck driver or something to that effect. And you start up with that image in your mind. You start building it up already in your mind where you have a start and you have an end and you work towards that end. And you put so much pressure on yourself in order to find that why and why you want to be a fire truck driver or why you want to be a fireman or a zoologist or whatever it is. And you put so much pressure on yourself that that why becomes the focal point. And it's really for everyone in my experience is that your why is the same throughout your whole life. It doesn't different. It doesn't um, vary as you're growing up and moving through life. You just have different experiences of it. Finding that why is really, really easy. What is the lowest, 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 lowest point you've ever had in your entire lifetime? The lowest point. And there's always one really, really low point. And describe that in different adjectives and verbs and find that one word, that one word that really describes how you actually felt. And mine was feeling like an underdog, feeling less than, feeling minority. And that's my why. And it has nothing to do with work. It has nothing to do with marketing. And as in the case of Four Paws, in my experience, that why for animals, it comes from the founders. And the founders have their why, and that trickles them down. So it doesn't really matter what area of vocation or education you're in, whether you're a kid, a teenager, you're in your 90s. Your why, there's always a reason. It's not a motivation. If it were a motivation, you'd be associating it all the time with feelings. Oh, I feel like rescuing the world from underdogs today. Oh, I don't feel like doing it today. Whereas a why is your responsibility and it's a discipline. And that's the reason why you get out of bed is that, you know, I have this to fulfill today. And it's not for anyone else except for yourself because you're only here to live, laugh and learn and enjoy life for yourself, as soon as you start putting it out of yourself, you start giving away your control and responsibility. And you think everything else, all the experiences is going to come from outside. And it should actually come from yourself because your inner reality creates your outer. So that was a very long answer, but your why is very, very simple. And that's what gets you out of bed in the morning. And whether you're in marketing starting up, that why just connects you to your audience. It connects you to particular, I call them your soul tribe, who you really want to be working with and working alongside. If I can really change the world, I don't know, but I can change myself in order to see the world in a different way. Something interesting you said in, 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 in the end now, I can change myself, but you also said that 
the why doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Alisa? Based on your experience yeah. working on yourself, also with other people, can you confirm that or do you see that differently? Um, I think it's, again, a fantastic question. I love what, what you ex explained to that and before, or maybe that helps um, um, to look at it. I think a big pitfall that we're doing is that we are clinging to ideas and concepts. So I resonate what you said, no matter if it's coming from childhood, that's or society tells us how a why needs to define the right term motivation. And also, um, you know, like when you write it down, I don't know if it's for companies, I feel often we're getting stuck in, in that. So it sounds so fancy, it sounds so amazing on paper, but there is no actually hard connection to that. And um, I don't know if the, the, the story might change, but the connection doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And the connection might be that you feel that you belong here that you're interconnected with this reality, whatever this might be. I mean, in this whole cosmic play, not only me sitting here and talking to this fantastic people, but me being as a part and you and everyone else uh, being part of this entire whole. I think this deep connection doesn't change, but the stories change and they might, our ego interfere, how fancy we wanted to put on LinkedIn or something like this. And I agree with you, that's complete bullshit. And I think it's also a very challenging way if you have an organization as a, um, I love what you said, um, how to really create this connection between different people mm -hmm. who might not um, connect to what says on paper with their heart. So how can I really establish this connection no matter what you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told you it, it will be about the, the meaning of life in the end. Uh, <laughs> we so that's why we, chose, yeah, that's like why we chose this session um, to, to start with. Now, Nicole, can I ask you a personal question? Sure. <laughs> what did you want to become when you were a kid? Did you, um, did you say, oh, I want to rescue animals at six years old? Or did you have a different dream? Um, no, I think with six years old, I definitely wanted to become an actor or a singer. But um, yes, that was obviously a part of talents. So, but the, the missing talents or um, not being talented enough to stick out of the okay. big mass, to say so. I, I, I know that. To say so, yeah. but uh, the, the wish to work, uh, to, to work with animals, um, that was something that maybe when I was 10. Okay. Yeah. Because the reason why I asked you this question, and uh, I think uh, you can already sense it, um, is because as we um, already established here, there's, even though there is a distinction between a professional or, 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 or business why and a personal why, they are so much uh, intertwined that you cannot separate them anymore, especially not in, in these times when we think about that our children probably won't have one job for the rest of their life compared to the generation before us. My grandfather was a fireman his whole life. Um, probably today it won't be like this. So in your opinion, and this is a question for all of you now, um, how can we help the younger generation deal with these kind of topics, deal with this uncertainty um, that they will grow up in a world where it will be changing all the time faster, but still stay true to yourself and true to your personal why, even if maybe you will work for 20 different companies in your life. I have an intuitive response. Ooh. Um, something which is very close to my heart and especially, you know, when we start these conversations, you continue thinking about it and diving deeper. But I think something that helps me a lot is, excuse my language, to chill the fuck out. And I mean that because we're getting so serious in this entire business and the world is changing and this and I need to find this and create something meaningful. Yes, yes, yes. And relax. Just relax trust and i think building on on like this connection cannot build um if you are in a continuous hesitate not hesitation but irritation and trying to get somewhere you're already here there's nothing to get as you said it is already within not without so if you relax maybe um have a glass of wine or whatever your perf preferred drug is just just kidding that was kind of a joke i told you a shit storm coming from uh, it's, your side. it's not pro no problem but just relax and and enjoy life and connect to that connect to your kids to like the nature to to that don't take life too serious i think this is something that comes up mm -hmm. um i have three teenagers at the moment and i love teenagers um prefer it 
but I had to put a lot of work in for them to be in the stage. Become at the teenagers, moment. yeah. Well, I know that. To, to function as teenagers, because you cannot rate, well, not that you cannot, um, it's not advisable to raise a teenager because they're already raising themselves. For, to come to your question, what advice for the next generation? Um, they are already, they already know that they're not one thing. They already know this. And I work with a lot of bridge generation students, clients that do a lot of job hopping. And they get told by society that they must stick to one thing. You've got to, you're not uh, diligent enough. You're not disciplined enough to stick it out. And there's a lot of guilt and shame that hangs around, with, uh, that clings to them around that. And that bridge generation, they're the ones that are creating the new jobs. They're the ones that are creating new eras that are coming forward. And the thing that I find for the next generation, my personal um, experience, is that they they're able to identify with their emotional intelligence much quicker than older generations. There was a lot of shit storms and a lot of trauma and inner child trauma that needed to be dealt with. And the younger generation are seeing all of this and going, I just want to chill the fuck out and not deal with all the shit. Like, I just want to live my life. So they're dealing with their inner child trauma very, very quickly. They're not being boxed into one thing. They're like, money is not capitalism. I don't want to be a part of this. I want to create my own, I don't know, currency, whatever that is, and moving forward with that. The generation coming, they're seeing so much more than we could ever see, and it's they're answering the questions much quicker with regards to their why, their purpose, who their soul tribe is, who the people they want to hang out with. They're, ex they're experimenting much, much quicker than what older generations have. Um, and they're enjoying life. They're getting over it very quickly so that they can move on to the next level, to the next whatever that level is, because life is a game. So my advice, or I don't know, for the next generation is to just chill the fuck out. I love it. And enjoy yourself to live, laugh, and learn, and experience life, and take every experience as a memory, and learn from it. There's no right or wrong. There never will be a right or wrong. You can only answer in the moment with what you have. And if you don't have what you have right now, then you go and learn it. Can this also create problems in organizations? Maybe a question for you, Nicole, because I'm assuming as a, um, as a leader in an organization, when all of my employees are working under the concept of chill the fuck out, I'm doing whatever I want and what makes me happy, um, there is room for drama or well, misperformance maybe. Mm -hmm. How do you see that? Or would you prefer if all your employees just chill the fuck <laughs> out and do whatever they want? <laughs> um, uh, to be honest, I never experienced this, uh, especially in this situation since I'm working in an organization where there's a very, very uh, strong why. So people are really here because of that purpose. I think in other industries where it's not so obvious, that's, that's much uh, harder. Um, I just read a wonderful book, um, the Let My People Go Surfing. Yeah, cool. So, uh, and, but in fact, if you, if you say the chill the fuck out, um, I, I would guess, especially, um, that most of the people would really make the, their day and just create their work around how they want to do it and how they fit, how, how your work fits best to what you can and what's your, um, what's the things that you're, what's your, um, what's your expertise and just defining the best um, cycle. Is it better to work in the morning, in the afternoon and so on. So um, going towards um, um, more um, self um, responsibility in creating the, your work environment. I think that is the direction where it would go. I hope can so. I, so. Yeah. I, like, I just <laughs> love that because you, you like, I think we have this old model of thinking, if we're chilling out, then that means Everyone's I'm irresponsible. <laughs> exactly. I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm going to use resources from yeah. others. And I claim it's the opposite. Yes. If you be, if you design your business and your life based on freedom and trust, mm -hmm. not on control, not on, I have to really know when you are here or there, then you are surprised what people up to. They want to contribute. Mm -hmm. They want to feel alive. They want to support. But we're just used to this pushing them if into If they boxes. feel the company's why, probably, right? 
And if I, if, if I don't connect with a company I'm working with and yes. don't care about their yep. goals, yep. then probably um, yes. I will do whatever. And that's the invitation yeah. for our corporate markets to see, to match it, that there is a new generation upcoming that wants something different. And maybe we can find a base where we can all play together. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to, let's just say, old economy companies who, who, who listen to that talk now, hopefully, and say, well, I want to... I want to change the way we are doing business right now and uh, um, let's, let's create a culture like this in our company. How would you achieve that? Uh, first this is all, your sales pitch, by the way. For your sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can only change something if the person that's listening resonates with what's being said and goes, I would like that in my company. And understanding, as Nicole said as well, yes, there's the why, but there's also the company culture. And a company culture determines a lot. Um, when someone's in control and wants to control everyone and every step of the way, that generation will not work well and will not be a good fit. Um, they have broken free, as I said before, it's not advisable to raise a teenager because they're already raising themselves. They've taken all the emotional intelligence that they've learned and it's not mistakes that they've seen, but they're wanting to get away from the control. They want to understand themselves and go, okay, well, if I do X, what will happen over here with Y and Z? And if you're anything like Bob Iger, who I absolutely love, um, that is someone that understands corporate culture. That is someone that goes, okay, well, you from this generation, you from this and you from this. What is the golden thread between all three of us? And when you're employing someone, you're employing based on the why, the purpose, understanding company culture, understanding the philosophy, where it's going in the future. That person wants to also know, how can I grow? Because they're not going to stay with you forever. They might be there for two or five years and then they're moving on. And there's a lot of investment for a company to train that person. So it's a lot of risk for the founder or the organizations of old thinking. Um, to break or traditional thinking to break free of that but once you implement it there's a whole new world that happens and that always happens when you try something new and you dive into cold water you'll always 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 get something way way better than what you ever expected and not having that old model of thinking the perceptions that we cling to can I can I add you don't um, <laughs> do whatever the okay I love that what you say so two things um, number one um, if you want change, please realize something needs to die. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, we're expecting to add up stuff, but something needs to create mm -hmm. room for something new to emerge. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And the second thing, I forgot right away, but it was so inspiring to listen to you. Mm -hmm. And I think it was um, how, how um, yes, 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 thank you. No. Um, Did you just thank yourself? Yes, okay. her. And I was going through for what, what she said right now. I think a large process is, and this is what you said in the beginning, that this company and person why are intertwined so we can see our employees or our uh, working with as allies mm -hmm. not as somebody who work for us you mm -hmm. exchange your lifetime mm -hmm. for a purpose of the company mm -hmm. and as you said we're not going to stay there forever so if i understand okay you want to become an author you want to create your own business you want to move there i need to know this as a leader so i can support you and we can create maybe business even together but it's a total and there are companies who are doing it or seeing it this way but it's a total different way than i'm trying to seduce you with another education program or a higher salary to stay there mm -hmm. um, instead of actually going with the flow and seeing how we can play how we can create yeah. because our purpose is the same make this life a better place in various ways yeah educating the generations into entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs uh, Patrick Beck David speaks about this in his recent book of um, the next uh, the five next moves or something to that effect um, in that the traditional want to keep you and train you and want to control you whereas the freer thinking is more okay well if you're an entrepreneur learn your thing how it is if you want to be an author but at the same time working for me you'll go off and do your own thing but you're still loyal to the company and when you're networking you still refer me so the in so those different jobs as you mentioned before Georg was that there's no single jobs anymore they're all intertwined into one another so if someone's in your company and they're working for you but also freelancing they'll always recommend you and there'll always be a loyalty to one another. And when you have a similar why to the company that you work for or for yourself, you grow together, strengthening the why, and that's 
how you, how you uh, change in the world and every fantasy, whatever it is, all universal laws. There's up, down, giving, receiving, whatever it is. Um, the witcher, when you want to become a witch, is that in order to receive something, some power or magic, you have to let go of something. So, or let it die. Or let it I die. like that even exactly. more. I think more, it's yeah. important to yeah. address it how it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I have some very smart and interesting questions here Ooh. on my Samsung tablet. Um, <laughs> now the tablet. Is <laughs> now the tablet. <laughs> Samsung tablet. Product placement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We're, we will get so much. Um, um, yeah, what, let's, uh, uh, now, the first one, and I think uh, this is for you, Nicole. You mentioned that you show each and every staff member that he or she or they is important in saving animals. How do you do this? Um, me, personally, and the whole organization, step by step, uh, we're working very much uh, with um, positive leadership and the PERMA model with, um, like, the, the, the positive engage, um, positivity engagement with the with the meaning. Sorry, I don't get all the abbreviations at the moment. Um, with That's okay. Creating Google this, it. Creating this meaning, accomplishment. So to really um, actively do it, not just deciding I wanna I, I wanna make the why living in everyone, but really thinking how can I do this and then really stick to the plan and do it. So it's in positive leadership having. Uh, and it's also a, a big reason for the organization because motivated, happy people are just working better and we're having a much better impact. So but that's really, um, so it's, um, yeah, also a bit selfish from my side that I want to have my people happy. The amazing thing about, about <laughs> this is you talk about this and it instantly puts a smile on your face, yes. uh, just even talking about it. So I think that shows us how powerful this can be. Um, one question that was also popping up in my head for you, Sashka, is I feel like I'm missing a step. This is not what I say, but what the person says. Um, how do you get from your lowest point to drawing your why from it? Um, that step is in between, is either resistance, it's either inaction, it's either an inner child trauma, it's questioning yourself. Am I doing the right thing? Was that the right thing? It's subconscious work that's going, that's, that you're not registering right now. That step, um, and it's not right or wrong, it's just working through it. Feel the fear and just go through it. And whatever that lowest moment is, ask yourself. Um, usually we say affirmations, um, I am enough. But also ask yourself affirmations, why am I enough? Because you give your brain something to do and you give your subconscious something to do. And your subconscious will then come up with answers going, well, why am I good enough? Because I'm shit hot in what I do. I've got all this experience, blah, 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 blah. As opposed to just going, I'm enough, and then silencing or keeping that subconscious at bay. So when this person is, thank you for the question, um, have asked the question, that step is great because it means that you're diving more into it. And what will come out of it when, you, when it suddenly realizes it, Whatever it is, a walking meditation, where you, whether you are meditating, going on a bike ride, dancing, having a bottle of wine. I won't have a glass, I'll have a bottle, red wine. Um, as soon as you're doing that, then the answer will suddenly pop up and you go, oh, that's what it is. Okay. And it's okay not to get it immediately. It took me a while to figure it out. It took me a long time. I had to write a book about it and figure it out. So it doesn't have to just pop up quickly. So Can this process be guided as well? Yeah. Yep, definitely. That's what I do with my clients as well. Asking questions. <laughs> so if you if you need help, product placement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I add also my two cents? Is your sales second. pitch or your? Yeah, your, okay, I have yeah. a podcast which is called I'm Enough, and one of the very things, good podcast. Yeah. Very good podcast. Thank you. Very amazing speakers there. Um, as you said, I agree. Like, if if you just positive affirmations don't work because what you're doing is like I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough. So you're saying actually you're not. Mm -hmm. because that's what you're doing and one last tip would be get out of here of this mind faculty and use your body mm -hmm. because the body knows, uh, knows it can be let it's a powerful tool also to get unstuck here and here and then it will come out there so yeah another great question from you guys um the why always seems to be a big question for brain workers <laughs> does the search for the why also include physical workers like a salesperson at a supermarket 100%. Definitely. If you're a human and you have a brain and heart yeah. and body, then I think the question of what the fuck are you doing here 
in this life is is important to anyone. It might hit you when you're 30, 30 or 50 uh, or um, close to your deathbed, but you will be answering this question for you yeah. at some point. I would like to add something. Um, we've been, uh, before we were going online, um, we were discussing about first world problems and the why is of course, and we always have to be very conscious about that. The why mm -hmm. is a thing that we are discussing here because we have the free, we, we are free to choose our why ourselves. Oh, yeah. Because if surviving is my why or to get food for the next yes. day. So there's um, th this privilege in really finding the meaning of, the, of our lives and really finding this, this why. And I think it's also totally okay if I say, okay, I want to have a comfortable life with my uh, with my uh, with my family, and I want to earn enough money to have this comfortable life. If this is the why, then it's totally okay. I don't. I I think it's very. Um, yeah, I don't. I think it's it's people who who are um, working, uh, living so much for their for their why and for um, you know like changing something and having a big purpose. I think they always expect that everyone sees it the same way, but I think accepting that um, a why can be very uh, different and really very uh, in this very small circle at home, it's totally okay. Now one, qu one final question for all of you, because unfortunately time is already running out. Um, one very short and precise tip of advice that you would give to someone who wakes up in the morning, let's just say for a longer period of time, each and every day struggling with getting up, asking himself or herself, what am I even doing with my life? Why should I go to work? Uh, how does this all even make sense? What would you advise to this person? Maybe, you know, an exercise or a, a brain game that helps in these kind of situations. By the way, this person is not me. I'm not asking for myself. I'm not, but I'm asking the question to you. So anything what you could recommend? Um, yeah, I've been and continue to be at this place. Sometimes you wake up and you just like question everything. I think the whole pandemic actually opened up the floor for these questions. And so I connect to that and feel that I can only share. And I, um, as you said it beautifully, um, um, it's an individual process also, and it can be so many different things. Number one, what helps me is um, discipline. So I do one small thing that helps me. And usually it's the bed. So oh, making the bed is great, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it is such a simple thing. But me making the bed, I'm like, I did my purpose of the day. This is amazing. I, I don't expect anything more from me. And that gives me so much strength, especially in these low moments where I'm incapable of doing so many different things. And the other thing is what helps me a lot is understand that the environment shapes and co-creates your internal experience. We touched upon that. So you continuously being in the same pattern, in the same routine, in the same uh, flat, and it's hard now, I get it, because we are all in lockdown. We need a pattern interruption. We need to get out. We need people. We need nature. We need to somehow break this. Yes. Thing. Yes. Yes. So think of a pattern interrupt that can take you out of this usual day-to-day uh, -day, um, yeah, prison that we build for ourselves. Um. First of all, I would like to say to whoever asked that question, why am I here and waking up and feeling very, oh, that was me. very despondent, very depressed, um, depressed um, from emotions. On my podcast, Future Forward Hub podcast, I have a, an episode on emotional anxiety. In this state, first of all, I want to say, fucking A, because it's the first step to going, I'm alive. You're awakening from a deep, deep, deep slumber. You're awakening from going, I was living, I was mute. My life was on mute. And now I'm starting to hear things, see things, feel things, and things are starting to awaken within you. And asking that question from that moment, it's going to be a long road from there. But definitely um, the main thing is also habits, but taking control of your emotions because your emotions control you. And rather than going that, then take control of your own emotions. I say content. Yes. Um, what what else to add? I think it's it's really just this: take your time. Don't don't uh, um, let yourself um, get yourself under pressure. Don't make the pressure for yourself. Uh, listen deeply into yourself and really really think about what what's 
what you want to have with your life and if you're already happy then show it so it's really um going into going into um, a direction where you're um just very finding a place where you're happy with yourself and just really not um yeah not letting yourself be stressed out i think those are perfect final words thank you so much for joining um it was fun it was fun and all the swearing by the way was initiated by her not by me thank you very much for joining and uh see you guys later in the next Bye. session <laughs>